Today we're talking about physics. Now, this isn't really a full lecture. I just wanted to te or re teach you or remind you about how to graph uh, velocity over time, distance over time, and acceleration over time in certain scenarios. First scenario Let's say that you have a car traveling at, uh, who knows, 3 meters per second. Or to make it more even, two meters per second. So now, if we take two meters per second, let's um, graph that. And here is our velocity over time graph, our acceleration over time graph, whoops, and our distance over time graph. Now. This is constant velocity. If it's constant velocity, then the change in velocity is zero. Since acceleration is change in velocity over change of time, that means that the numerator over here is going to be zero, which always leads to acceleration being zero. So the acceleration graph isn't very interesting. The velocity graph is a bit more interesting. It's always at two meters per second, so it will still be a straight line. However, it has some magnitude. The magnitude is, of course, two. So we're gonna put it there. And finally, for the distance, it's even more interesting than that. The graph would be two x, where the slope represents the velocity. And so, and this is because distance increases over time at a constant rate. So for example, um, dt at um, zero, this is zero. One second, this is two. Four, uh, um, two seconds, this is four. Three seconds, this is six. And so on and so on. And In fact, that is uh, about the uh, uh, truth. The AT graph, the VT graph, and the DT graph all in one for this scenario. Pretty simple. Now let's jump to something a little more complex. Now it's not going to be uh, much harder than the first one, but let's say that this thing starts with an initial velocity at four meters per second, and it's already moving at, uh, and it's moving at two meters per second or actually yeah let's say that it starts four meters at the position four meters and it's traveling at two meters per second that's what i meant so now what can we do over here well how we can graph this is really the same thing. The acceleration is still zero. The velocity is still two. Um, oh wait, I forgot to sign this, sign this, and sign this. And so it just looks like this. However, for distance, slightly raised a little bit because we already start at four and then increase from there. Now, let's look at two more scenarios that are a bit trickier than usual. Now, the first different scenario. Let's say that it starts at zero meters per second, but it's accelerating, but it accelerates at two meters per second squared. Constant acceleration, no worry. Now, how? So now, velocity is pretty simple. Um, Vt. It increases with a slope of 2 because it increases by 2 meters per second every second. The acceleration now is um, at the value of 2. And distance is 
over time. The distance over time over here is going to actually be something like a quadratic. How can we find it out? Well, kinematics. Now, this looks hard, but it gets easier when you realize that vi is zero. So it just gives you half a t squared. And it's even easier when you realize that since acceleration is two, cancels out with the half, giving you this d equals t squared. All right. So, oh yeah, it's supposed to be red. So, those are our three graphs for our third scenario with acceleration. Now our fourth and final scenario. Let's say that the car has already started at four meters per second and it accelerates at two meters per second squared. Now how can we express this? Well, also pretty simple. The acceleration graph is the same like before. So um, acceleration time. And we just draw this over here. The velocity graph, as we know, is going to be a little different. So that means that since it already starts at four and goes up from there, it's going to look something like this. And distance over time, as a result, looks a bit different. D equals V I T plus half A T squared. So that means that D will be half A T squared. That gives us T squared plus four T. Or in other words, T and times T plus four, which is also basically just going to look like a quadratic. In fact, I guess, hmm, should we pull up decimals? Yes, we should. So, let's open up decimals. Oh yeah, um, don't look at that. I was just um, refining my culinary skills. Anyway, all right. So now let's take the equation y is equal to x squared plus 4x. Looks a little something like that. Which means it looks a bit like a linear equation until you realize it isn't. So it will look something like this. So that is, oh wait, I forgot one thing. Now, let's finally remember one last thing. We have a VT graph then you have to remember that the area under a graph from one point to another, so for example, if we go from zero seconds to two seconds over here, then the area under the graph over here will be the distance traveled in two seconds. And so, and this is because this is equal to VT, which is also So, that is all we have for today. Just a little bit of a review. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.